we got some Zoomers on the show today. So from the studio in the bonus room above the garage on the north side of Fort Mill, South Carolina, in the shadow of Charlotte, the buckle of the Bible Belt, and the foot of Mount Belzoni, this is that YouTube show and podcast that we like to call YC DP TV. Zoomers, yes. If you heard about all those Zoom calls that have been raising tons of money for the uh, Harris campaign, and we got a few of them from my neighborhood up here in uh, Fort Mill, Carolina Orchards, to talk about their experience on those calls and uh, the other stuff they're doing here in the Democratic Party. Going to call this episode, and we took a vote, Zooming for Kamala. Now, uh, we, we originally thought, mm, maybe it should be more formal, Zooming for Vice President uh, Kamala Harris. I don't know. I couldn't fit that in the title. And, and then toward the end of the show, you'll see that I sort of pulled rank as the producer and said, I think Kamala's name is more recognizable than even her last name, Harris. So it's Zooming for Kamala. And let's meet our panel. Hey, guys, welcome to the program. Uh, we're all together here because three of the four of us have been involved in those massive Zoom calls for presidential candidate Kamala Harris. And I am going to I'm going to call the show Zooming for Kamala. And the first thing I want to get from you guys, well the first thing I want to get from you guys is an introduction who you are. And then I want to ask is it okay to say Zooming for Kamala because I've heard people say it isn't really polite to use her first name in everything and other candidates, male candidates, last name. It's like, it was Biden, it was Trump, but it's Kamala. So as you introduce yourselves, tell me what you think about that. Let's start with Niall. My name is Niall Doty, and I am a resident of Carolina Orchards. And Gary, um, the answer to your question, I feel that it should be formal. Vice President Kamala Harris. I think when we say Kamala, it's just a little too casual, but that's just my opinion. Let's hear what the other ladies have to say. Okay, Monica, introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Monica Mullings, and uh, I, I kind of agree with, uh, with you, Niall. Um, most of the quotes have been for Kamala, but I think um, Vice President Kamala Harris could be the way we go. You know, not to uh, take away her title that she has earned. And why are we referring to her as Kamala when we are referring to the others by their last names? What do you think, Pat? I'm going to try hard not to say anything really profane. but um, <laughs> you, you can if you want to. I, I can always edit. Nathan, I also live in Carolina Orchards. I think the, the Vice President Kamala Harris is really fine. Um, I don't really give, you know, the former president any of the respect he's due. So um, I, I, I should really offer it to the person that I think is really the better candidate right now. So, so it sounds like everybody says, let's call her Vice President Kamala Harris. I think in formal settings, that's the way to go. I think, you know, here I'm going to say Kamala. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm, I'm just going with the title for the show right now. Sure. Should it be <laughs> Zooming for Kamala or Zooming for Vice President and, and Presidential Candidate Kamala Harris, which I can't fit on the screen? Right. So I know what I well, want. Well, maybe do. we can. Can we come back to the title towards the end as we yeah. figure out what we've really talked about? Sure. Okay. So all of you guys are in my democratic democratic group. Not 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 that I own it, but I'm part of it here in the neighborhood called Carolina Orchards. Um, it's at the very north end of Fort Mill, and I was talking to Niall on the phone yesterday, and you were telling me how you had been participating in all of these massive Zoom calls for Kamala, Vice President Kamala Harris. See, see the problem I got here? Um, and I said, 
and you were being effusive about it. You, you were very excited about what was going on in the calls that you are on. And I said, wait a minute. This is a, a podcast. This is a show for all of the Democrats in your county. So, so I, I sort of tried to stop you from talking. It, it wasn't very successful. But so, and you recruited uh, Monica and Pat from here in Carolina Orchards, and all three of you have been on those Zoom calls. And I'm the odd man out because I have not been. So, what I wanted to do is hear what those calls were like. It was really invigorating just to see all different types of people coming together for one cause. And um, I just learned so much. And not only that, fired up and ready to go and see what I can do. Some of you may already know about the calls because they started on July 21st when our beloved President Biden had stepped down and passed the torch to Com uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. And it started off with a call that Sunday night, and uh, it was a group of women called Win With Black Women, uh, WWBW, hashtag one voice, one fight. And on that call, there were approximately 40 something thousand people and they made approximately $1.5 million. Well, come to find out though, that these group of ladies, and I forget how many started it, but they started it four years ago and they would always meet on uh, Sunday nights. So they were very excited and they were trying to get a couple of thousand and they were hoping that they will get more, that they broke Zoom. People couldn't get on the call. There were so many. So they had to go to the, the tech president and ask them to open it up so more people can get on. So it ended up with approximately 40 something thousand people. Well, the black men, they're like, okay, well. Um, so so this, is, this was for black women. In, yeah, this in, was for black women. In yeah, theory. when did, did, with did black they, women. Did they have a bouncer at the at the door keeping anybody else out? No, no. <laughs> there were all kinds of people on that call. There were men on that call. There were other women besides um, black women on the call. And as a matter of fact, there was one um, one Latino woman, and she said, "Oh, you know, I'm just it's so invigorating. You have to invite the um, Latino women to your cookout." You know, they were just really excited. But from that call, then all these other calls started popping up. So the next night it was when with black men is a um, huge moment for all of us. Tonight will be the largest gathering of black men in politics in, in recent history. Um, and we are united to support our sister Vice President Kamala Harris for president. They had, I forget how many, it was in the thousands. It might have been 30,000. I can't remember. I think they may have made like 1.8 million. And so these are approximate. And I'm pretty sure that the numbers now have increased because they had a streaming, uh, using a streaming service. So people are still going out there streaming and making donations. Well, then from that call, it was a uh, white woman answer the call. Hi, everyone. Welcome. This call went from a 5 a.m. tweet by Shannon Watts to a reality in less than 72 hours. We were inspired by the 44,000 black women who organized a call in the eight hours following the announcement of Vice President Harris's candidacy. Jotaka Edy and Win With Black Women ran the first leg in that relay. Then they handed the baton to win with black men. And now here come the white ladies in formation for Kamala Harris and democracy. Who's got next? Democracy is a team sport. So I was able to get on that call. I said, OK, I need to find out what they're talking about. Yep. And it ended up being how many was it like 200,000? 200, yeah. 200,000. And how, how much did they make? Was they're it eight over, million? They're over eleven now. They're okay, over 11, eleven million now. Now, were you on that call, Pat? I was. I was. Okay, and then why don't you talk too. about it from your perspective? Well, it's it, 
was interesting. Monica told me about it, and I so I I did hop on, and I think um, there's a lot of conversation about Kamala, but the other part of this, and I want to make sure we cover this in this conversation, is part of where I started my journey was before Kamala got into the race, a group called Red Wine and Blue. It's something that um, I learned about reading Heather Cox Richardson's letters, and it's a grassroots organization primarily of women, and it was started, I want to say, in Ohio when um, the Dobbs decision came down because they wanted to mobilize the vote to put women's rights on the ballot in Ohio. Also some school issues, um, book banning and so forth, and public education. So there was a lot of discussion prior to Kamala getting into the race from Red Wine and Blue, and they hosted a special event with Heather Cox Richardson on the call to talk about Project 2025 what it is and to do some education about it. And that was really what got me fired up as much as anything because people need to know and they need to know what lies are being told about it. So that was sort of a follow on to that that I got onto the call and got involved in something called Trouble Nation. There's a local chapter and Monica and I went to that on Sunday following the Thursday call. You guys are serious activists. Right. <laughs> yeah. I have, you know, I'm looking at Niall's shirt. I printed nine shirts today I want. <laughs> I know you can't <laughs> read them all. <laughs> but there are some really juicy ones here. Niall, show us your shirt. Okay. Uh, let's see if you can see it. Let me stand, stand up. Okay. And there it is. And it says, get in good trouble. So I thought it would be fitting to wear it on this call. Absolutely. Because that's what I feel that I am doing. And I probably will be getting in good, tr getting in trouble <laughs> when people find out my um, political affiliations. But I'm, I'm okay with it. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because sure. this is something Monica said and has come up a few times. The political climate today suggests that it's not really safe to wear things that say what you think. <laughs> and that's a really unfortunate circumstance that, you know, you can be attacked for what you're wearing. Now, the first time I had an inkling of that was a couple of years ago at the um, 4th of July parade in Baxter Village, where the uh, Democratic Party had um, some some decorated uh, golf carts and and people marching, and they gave me a York County Democratic Party T-shirt to wear, which was okay at the parade, but I had to walk a couple blocks back to my car, and I was thinking, does that make you a target? I kind of kind of feel like it makes you a target, except I only passed a couple of other people, and they said, that's good to see. The impression I got from them is it's also that's rare to see. <laughs> I, I suspect that yes. you can wear a MAGA hat around York County and just about any place in South Carolina very safely. Yeah. And also in our community as well. So, yeah. I was saying that, you know, I remember back in 2008, 2012, you know, you could knock on doors and, you know, register voters and talk about uh, issues. But today it's, uh, it's a different thing. So I can't put a sign in my yard. So I, I will wear a T-shirt. <laughs> I'll definitely wear yeah. t-shirts. Wear, wear the yes. t-shirt and sit out on the on the front porch. Absolutely. Or on the lawn. <laughs> in, in, in France, up and down the street. Why not? Yeah. I get the impression yeah. from what you guys are saying that these Zoom calls and the people organizing them did not spring up overnight. That they've they were outgrowths of existing existing groups. Well, it, at least the one for when with black women, it had started four years ago. The, the yeah. white one is new. Uh, yeah, that, that one is new. And I think what um, they were saying on these calls, because of the um, Black women getting out there first, then they passed the baton to right. uh, the, the Black men, 
to the white women. And then there were other calls in between. The Latinos had their call. I think um, South Asian, they had their calls. And then there were some other calls, the LBGQT community, they had a call too. And there's some other ones that I may have missed, but there have been calls uh, and Zooms as a result of that and also raising money. Then um, I have to say, this was last night, there, there were two calls. One was called White Dudes for Hairs. So, so I funny. thought, oh, I have to get on that call too. <laughs> so, you know, you you did have to take and sign up and everything. So I thought, okay, well, my name is Niall. So they don't know if I'm a male or a female. <laughs> so I'm going to go <laughs> and get on the call. And I have to tell you, it was so inspiring to see white males and claiming, you know, owning it. Yes, I'm a dude. And yes, I am for Kamala. Yes, um, I support my women. They um, do not like how things are going and they feel that she can take them to their bus stop, just like with me. I may not agree with everything, but she gets me closer to my bus stop. I want to say a hundred and. 40 something thousand people were on that call. And I, I know that they were trying to get to either three or 4 million. I know when I got off the call, they were at 3.5 million. It was just interesting to see how all these calls came together at the last minute and just started asking for money and, and asking people to do certain things, um, and I will get to that as well. And then there was another call, and it was for all the women. There were so many diverse women that were on the call talking about what they're doing, giving their stories, and these were women that um, are head of organizations, top in their fields, foundations, and just came together for sisterhood. It was just a huge sisterhood if you want to get involved with the campaign go out there to events.democrats.org and it is mobilized it's part of mobilized and it has all the different things that you can get involved in for the campaign and then with the meeting last night with the women they say you can text three zero three three zero women and that will get you to them if you want to donate volunteer whatever you want to do so those are the two websites that i think are very important and one thing i also want to stress is even with all of these calls when you donate through them it goes directly to the campaign it doesn't go to the organization it goes to the the campaign so that's a good thing. So you know where your monies are going. People are skeptical about, well, I don't know where this money is going. It, unlike some other campaigns, this goes directly to the um, Harris campaign. I was just going to add that the organization that Red Wine and Blue is a national organization, and it was started quite some time ago, as uh, Pat had indicated. It's a bipartisan organization, and it goes across the whole United States. If you just look online, you'll find that they have chapters all over the U.S. Actually, they say nonpartisan rather than bipartisan. Their goal is to, you know, as they put it, um, meet you where you live and help you with whatever issues are important to you. Unfortunately, there's not much going on in South Carolina which is why we went to a Steel Creek meeting on Sunday. So I'm thinking there's probably going to be more of these Zoom calls, and uh, I'm not sure where you find out about them to begin with. Uh, how did you guys learn w where these calls were coming from? Everybody call everybody else? Pretty much. I mean, um, you know, uh, I have a friend that lives in Steel Creek. She's involved in Red, White, and Blue. She sent me uh, text messages telling me about what was going on. And, of course, Niall, she... She's always on point, so she's been sending uh, information. And, you know, when I get the information, I just forward it to everybody I know. What's it like on one of these Zoom calls? Uh, if you've got 
a hundred thousand people on a call. Not everybody's going to get a chance to talk. How do they organize them? Well, there's typically a facilitator that uh, that heads up the call, the point person, I guess, and they go from person to person. You go into the chat room, um, and you can type in, you know, if you want to speak. And of course, you know that on some of these calls, I mean, it's just been politicians, different activists, as well as entertainers. Uh, anybody of, you know, of any substance is, is a lot, well, you know what, not even, because I was on the women's call uh, that first night, and there were people on there that I had never heard of. They gave them time to speak, and it was exhilarating and moving, and actually some of the, some of the speakers kind of brought you to tears. Yeah. I was watching uh, John Stewart, Daily Show last night. They were off mm -hmm. the air during the past week. And he was you know, on vacation or whatever. He's probably kicking, kicking himself with all the things that were going on. So he did a little catch up to, to sort of review and he did, did it as a skit. He was talking about the day before Biden announced that he was going to step out of the race and Democrats were wailing and gnashing their teeth. Oh, I am a Democrat. <laughs> And then one day later, breaking news, President Biden dropping out of the 2024 race. Tonight, breaking news, Vice President Kamala Harris, now the presumptive Democratic nominee. In the span of a week. How did you guys feel before and after? What was your turnaround? I was going to vote for Joe Biden if he had one foot in the grave. <laughs> I was going to vote for him if he was stolen in diapers. Yep. That's right. That's right. Because of what he has accomplished during his administration. You know, people talk about Joe Biden, and Joe Biden is not, it's not a single person. He has an administration, and he's got some really good talent within his administration. So, yeah, he had my vote. I wasn't really happy with, um, of course, you know, we were all feeling some kind of way about the debate. That was not going to stop me from voting for him. But I have to say that when he named Vice President Kamala Harris, I mean, I just think that it's just on fire right now, just on fire. I'm just, you know, praying that we can keep the momentum for the next 99, 98 days that we have left. If we do, Trump has no chance to win. Well, I'm going to comment on that because I have strong feelings on it. Like Monica, I would have voted for Biden drooling and in diapers. I wouldn't, I did not care. And it infuriated me that they would not get away from talking about him quitting. And from my perspective, the upside of the assassination attempt, and before I finish, bef let me finish before you think I really believe it, is it stopped that news cycle for a couple of days. I also always thought that if he were going to do something, it would not be before the convention. And sure enough, he gave them just enough time to maybe have a little bit of a convention bounce. And then he slapped it, just chopped it right off. And I'm thrilled about that. I thought his timing was impeccable on that subject. I am excited about having a candidate that I think can succeed in this election, but I have great trepidation about the possibility of full on cheating and election interference, because we've seen it before. We saw it in 2016, we saw it in 2020, and there's no reason to believe that they haven't refined it. Some of the stuff that I have been hearing of late where people are just getting dropped off the voting rolls. That's um, a, a subject that I was hearing on uh, Rachel Maddow last night. Trump has actually been telling people, I don't need your vote. He told his supporters that they don't need to vote for him this November. My instruction, we don't need the votes. I have so many yeah. votes. We don't need votes. I tell my people, I don't need any votes. We got all the votes we need. I don't need votes. We don't need votes. We got more votes than anybody's ever had. If you don't have to vote, don't worry about voting. The voting, we got plenty of votes. What that means is that he doesn't think he needs to win the vote to win the election. He doesn't think he needs to win the election in order to take power. They are going to throw so many monkey wrenches into the machinery of the election that we won't be able to, or they won't be able to, come up with an accurate vote count that isn't disputed in court, and then it gets thrown 
to the House of Representatives to decide who the uh, president is going to be. And each state gets one vote. We don't. Yeah, yeah. we don't win. Rhode Island gets one vote. Wyoming gets one vote. California gets one vote. And so, yeah, the Democrat is never going to win in a situation like that. So th- that's something to watch out for. And it, it, uh, it, it sounds drastic, but it also sounds exactly like what Trump has been planning all along. Exactly. Exactly. Here in South Carolina, we don't have to worry about that too much because the state is never going to vote for a Democratic president at this point. Uh, it, we're going to rely on other states to be able to do it, but this is scary. Mm-hmm. Terrifying. But I, but I don't think it that means we have to. We can stop doing our best to have a winning election. Well, and I think that's part of why we need to really talk a lot about Project Twenty Twenty Five. I, I, I just can't lose hope that there are some people who don't know how severe it is, and would come to their senses if they did. We have heard about it, but there's this decisive middle group of people that don't seem to pay very much attention to politics until the very last minute. And how do we reach them and say, look what this guy is planning, just in case you were thought maybe he's the guy you wanted to vote for. Look what they're planning. As a leftover, as a follow-on for the calls that you have been on, there are action items and things, Niall, I think things you've been getting involved in. Um, Tell me about what kind of work it left for you to uh, to start doing? Oh, okay. And I think that's where um, part of the action call is to bring in Monica and also Pat because they're they're taking action right now. They're saying to make sure that you get people out, register them to vote, and also check your voter registration to make sure that you are still in the system. Make sure you have your um, IDs and to get out to vote. But and that you know where your polling location is, where your voting yes. location is, because that's changed for us, I know. Yes, know the voting um, locations. And there's a website that um, people can go out on to find out where they vote and then to get involved. And one thing is, is to, to talk to your family members talk to your your friends uh organizations that you are in there are some people you know they say just talk to people in the grocery store i'm not there yet (laughs) but if you get any information you know pass it along go out there to uh events.democrat.org and find out what type of volunteer things that you can do there. You can write postcards, and um, Pat and Monica are already doing that, so they'll talk about what they're doing. You can take and text people. You can use your social media. You can email people, whatever. You know, there's like a lot out there, and donate. Go out there and donate. Now, for me, um, because I have been traveling a lot, I'm going to be doing the um, virtual campaigning and probably working for the campaign in the battlegrounds. And I I don't know if I mentioned or not, but text banking and phone banking, those are all things and canvassing. Those are all things that you can do. and, And but you have to decide on what you want to do and then make a plan and then get your family and friends to join in with you. Uh, your church group, your uh, prayer group, whatever groups that you're in um, with like-minded people, get them in there, you know, to help out. And then when you go to vote, you know, take somebody with you. They say, take five people with you when you go to vote. I I did want to show people where they can go to find out where their polling place is and also to see what a sample ballot, who's going to be on the sample ballot. That's not available yet. But this is the website, SC Votes s-c-v-o-t-e-s dot gov. And under the voters tab, you can um, do a lot of things, but you can check my voter registration. Yeah, the and, second one. Yeah, and you fill out these uh, these items. The only sketchy thing it's going to ask you about is your the last four digits of your social security number. Um, some people may balk at putting that kind of information in. But if you put that in, it will, uh, and I'm 
I can't go any further without filling that out, so I'm not going to try to do that right now. But if you put that information in, it will tell you where your current polling place is and all of the various districts and jurisdictions and precincts and everything that that applies specifically to you. That's why they want to know uh, who you are and you know, specifically who you are. And you can get a sample ballot once that ballot has been prepared. So you can see everything that's going to be on the ballot. Uh, which is, Do you know if there's a similar thing for North Carolina, Gary? Oh, probably. Um, oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah. Yeah. Sure there is. yeah. I, th I think for national, I want to say I will vote.com. It's on a national basis. This is something like we might want to add to the postcards. Yeah, we're currently doing postcards. And one other thing I wanted to mention before I forget, as far as volunteering, people can go to their local campaign office and believe me, they need help as well. And if you don't like donating online, then you can write a check and take it to the local campaign office. In addition to that, the people are there working really hard. So you can take some treats, you can take some food and drop that off and water, drop that off as well to them. So Monica and Pat, tell us about your postcard writing. Well, we, you know, we met with an organization in Steel Creek called Race and Grit, which is part of Trouble Nation. We met at a, a woman's house. Uh, and she was kind, kind enough to set this thing up. And we uh, talked about, you know, introducing ourselves and, and talking about the campaign and what we could do. She had postcards as well as stamps for us to fill out. We filled out some while we were there. We brought some home. And we also talked about possibly um, setting up like a, just a location uh, rather than knocking on doors, a location where people can come to us to register to vote. So I think that will probably be one of the uh, things that are coming up with the group. I'm very encouraged by them. Yeah. I think it's important to focus or, or comment on the fact that unfortunately, because South Carolina is deemed such a lost cause and this was in Steel Creek. So um, we are doing mailing for unaffiliated North Carolina voters. Yeah. It is North Carolina, but you know, North Carolina has the potential to be a swing state perhaps again. And so my hundred cards and Monica's hundred cards and the rest of the hundred cards that we send, maybe there'll be some votes there that will swing the state. And the cards are simply to remind people to check their registration, check their voting locations, bring their friends to vote. And the votes voting starts, voting is November 5th, early voting in North Carolina starts on the 17th of October. Yeah, early voting here is uh, two weeks ahead of the election. I can't I calculate the date in my head, but it's two weeks ahead. Twenty. I think it's the 21st, I looked that up. It starts on Monday the 21st, I believe, and goes until the Saturday before the election. I looked it up on Saturday. All right. There's something I, I want to mention about the difficulty we might feel or the, you know, the, the lack of enthusiasm we might feel in voting for president in South Carolina, thinking our votes are wasted, that, that the Republican is always going to win in South Carolina, at least the foreseeable future. We have lots of down-ballot candidates, but we don't have lots. We have a few down-ballot candidates, and they need as much support as we can give them because th yeah, they're not a lost cause. I want to point out something that we've got here on the uh, York County Democratic Party website. It's a, uh, a tab called Meet the Candidates, and right now, for president and vice president, it's just got a couple of question marks until we have an official candidate. So a little bit of explanation about what has been going on there. This is not your news source, but it's a good source for other background information. Uh, understanding that statewide, we're not electing a governor this year. We're not electing a senator this year. We get down to the regional offices and the ones that affect York County. And Evangeline Hundley is running for Congress again in the 5th District, which covers York County. And then State Senate... Um, Mike Fanning is the incumbent. If you're in District 17, that's only a, a small slice of York County down by Rock Hill. For those of us here in the Fort Mill area, Matt Villardebo is running again, and that is an open seat. The incumbent is not running again. And a little bit farther west of us, 
over in District 46, John Zabel is running for uh, South Carolina House. And then uh, a little bit south in District 49, John King is the incumbent. And I don't think he even has any Republican opposition, so he's pretty well elected. It's important, I think, to say that we can't ignore a presidential election because we don't think we're ever going to make a difference in voting for president because of all those down-ballot races, they all need our help. It will be very interesting this year to see if any of those uh, Nikki Haley voters will actually stand up and say, no, I'm not voting for him. I think that, that a lot of her constituents could be persuaded. She based her whole campaign on being very anti-Trump. And like yes. most of the other Republicans who are still seeking some kind of office, eventually decided that, that their fate was tied to him. And they weren't going to get anywhere mm -hmm. by, by being his opposition. So I wish that, that she had more character than that. The one big showing of character that we have seen in this election was President Biden stepping down from yes. the campaign. That yes, was an amazing right. show well, of character. I also have to give it to Chris Christie, who wouldn't endorse Haley because he said, because she's going to turn around and end up being his vice president. Yeah. But we look at the, uh, at the Republicans who have consistently opposed Trump and they are now ordinary citizens because they all lost their elections or never even tried again. Adam Kinzinger in Illinois. Liz Cheney. Liz, yeah, Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney. You make a stand like that these days and uh, you're in trouble. So, so we are currently in honeymoon period, sugar high. Anyway, it's feeling pretty good. Do you guys think that that momentum is going to last? Well, I think we'll get a little bounce from the convention. We could make maybe push it out another couple weeks. But then I think the rubber is really going to hit the road. I want to just comment on something because I love Jasmine Crockett. And last night she was on something and I can't even remember what it was. But she says, yep, the t-shirt, the, t the, the now the DEI t-shirt that they, they want, yeah. you know, the label that they want to put on Vice President Harris is DEI. And yep, she definitely earned it. She had been elected a prosecutor. She had been elected the attorney general. She had been elected to the U.S. Senate before she was ever the vice president. J.D. Vance has been in the Senate for not even two years. So what I don't want to hear from that side is about a DEI hire. I might have that T-shirt made. I, I want to comment on we have 98 days left. And as far as the momentum, I don't think we're in the um, honeymoon stage because we don't have the time. We have to keep forging. We have to keep working. We have to keep organizing. We have to keep talking to our um, family members, our friends, our inner circle. We have to keep doing that. And people know who is for her and who is in the middle. And this is where we need to be informed, educated, and talk about it and also tell our story while we're out here doing this. Because there there isn't there isn't any time to sit back at all. Ninety eight days is gonna be here before you know it. The calls were reminding people to get out there and just keep trying to do as best as you can. In the woman's call, they said, get your rest, stay hydrated, drink lots of water, because this is a battle that we have to put on our armor and we have to forge ahead. So I'm motivated and I tell you, we're not going to stop until the election. What I'm seeing, even with the calls that I was on and with different people and organizations, they're taking that message back to those organizations and getting them mobilized as well, because we know that our d democracy is uh, at stake here and our freedom. And we don't want to go backwards. We want to we want to go forward. We want to not vote for a a felon, but a prosecutor. So we we can't get tired, you know. And and they had also said if you start feeling tired, link up with someone. Don't do it by yourself. 
link up and just partner up with people so you can continue to forge on. And, and that's what we have to do. Niall, are you running for vice president here? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I'm, but, I'm kidding, of course. Um, but do, I'm, I'm, I know, but I'm voting. I'm voting for her, though. Do, that's for sure. And um, taking my crew, um, like they said, when you go to vote and, uh, you know, making sure that my kids and, oh, and, and on the um, white women um, answer the call, they were saying, Take your children with you. If you're knocking on those doors, take your children with you. And I thought, mm, I remember that growing up. My grandmother took me when she was able to vote. She voted in every, every election. And I remember the first time around with um, Barack Obama running for president. I took my children with me too, knocking on those doors. So, yes, you have to start them out young. And then my two grandsons, they know what's going on. They know about President Biden and they know about Vice President Kamala Harris and who we support in our household. So they're they're not too young. And I told them, I said, guess what? You'll be able to vote just like Mimi when you become 18 years old. And so they know that one has nine years to go and nine years will be here before you know it. Well, so let's hope that's um, the truth now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the truth. And I'm just let's hope it is. I know. I know. Well, you know what? We have to keep hope alive. We have to continue to hope for this. We have. To, and that was the other thing that with all these calls, they all talked about hope. That's what they talked about. And, and and we have to do that. And there are prayer calls too, you know, various prayer calls. And that's another thing I forgot to mention. If there's something else that you can do, start a prayer call, start a prayer chain. You can do that every day. You can do it once a week. But yes, um, we, you know, can't sit back and just be complacent. Oh, and, and the other thing is I reached out to my yoga instructor. OK, because I'm feeling myself getting all anxious and everything and I'm not home. And she started this um, podcast It's called um, Nidra, N-I-D-R-A. And I texted her today. I said, you know, I'm out of town and I won't be back now until the end of August. So have you started that podcast? And so she said, yeah. And what it is, it's relaxation. You just take and get comfortable and she just takes you down this journey of relaxing for 50 minutes. And I tell you, once it's over and you're awake, it's like, oh, my goodness, you're relaxed from head to toe. So I'm going to be passing that around, too. I am anxious. You know, I feel that I, I'm unable to sit still. But you know what? I'm going to be doing my Nitra every <laughs> night before I go to bed and I'll be ready the next day. I'm just get up and keep on moving. I'm just enjoying the energy that Niall is building up as we go along through this program. I'm pretty sure you're uh, you're ready to campaign for something. I'm not sure what. Is that it for everybody? Yes, that's it. And Gary, thank you so much for doing this. Well, thank you guys. I mean, you guys made the show, and I appreciate your coming. Niall, over to my my left. That one with the hats and yep. the shirt in good trouble. Get in good trouble. Monica, right below me, and and, and Pat, uh, over on the, the lower right corner. I guess we're here to play Hollywood Squares. This is, <laughs> and we'll make the show, the official title of the show, Zooming for Harris. I can't okay. fit in Vice President Kamala That's Harris. That's good. That's good. Zooming, Zooming for, for Harris. Harris. I like that. Zooming for Harris. Yes. yes. I, I personally think that, that, that her first name is, first of all, more recognizable, um, more people catch that. Yeah, you know what? I, I, you know what? I'm sorry to flip flop like this, but I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you, Gary. Okay, how many people it, have it I convinced? It should be Kamala. Raise your hand. Can you see my you can hand? Go with Kamala. It's yeah, all right. Go with Kamala. <laughs> yeah. You know they're playing the whole Cam um, Camelot, Camelot um, thing to try and take her back yeah. to the Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> Kamala. Kamala, a name that makes her critics view. We will admit we did not see this coming, but Kamala. Kamala. Kamala.
Kamala. Kamala. Can sure light up the room. Yes, queen. How many uh, just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> okay. And how many want to be brat? <laughs> okay, no, the hands got to go up for Brat. Everybody wants to be Brat. Yeah, yeah. And, and laughing too. Hey, we're having fun. We have to make this fun too. So we That's have right. to laugh about it. All right. So, so, so I'll I'll break the tie. The official title is Zooming for Kamala, not Kamala. This has been the York County Democratic Party YouTube show and podcast. We call it YCDP TV. Bye, everybody. Over, bye bye. Over and bye bye. out of here. Bye.